Welcome everyone. This is Andrea with Moving Forward with Andrea and it is January 11th, 2014, Saturday night. And I have the talented Drew Hollinger on the line and he's from New Jersey at the moment. He can uh, give us a little more about where uh, he started and all that in a minute. Uh, he is part owner of McVeigh PR uh, company that does a lot of PR work for celebrities and for a pop music artist. So first of all, I want to say hello to Drew. How you doing, Drew? Good, good. How are you? I'm excellent. So can you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, how you, um, first of all, I know you're only like 21 years old, right? I'm actually 20. 20, wow, you're not even 21 yet. Okay, <laughs> great. Well, um, from what you, our conversation prior to the interview, um, I know you started this journey, it's been in your heart and soul, and you have some people in your family that are associated with things, which make it a little easier for you as well. Um, can yeah. you just, you know, give us a little, um, you know, background on, like, uh, who you are and how you got started, and I want you to let people know if it's okay with you on um, the disability that you've had and what you went through and still... Um, because you know my show is about moving forward, how you move forward through that, which I think is excellent on how you approach things and put the blinders on and, you know, kept to yourself and, and the people that were close to you to help you through this journey that you're doing now. Yeah. Okay, well, um, um, I was born in Essex Snows, New Jersey, which is North Jersey, about 30 minutes outside of New York City. Uh, you know, I've always lived in the suburbs, New Jersey, northern suburbs, and uh, it's all pretty much started when my parents put me into a small, special, uh, a special school for uh, learning disabled students when I was in elementary school. Can, excuse so, me. Can you tell? Uh, um, can you tell the folks that are um, going to be listening to this? What um, yeah. what is you know what's going on with you of why you are putting something like that so that they understand what we're talking about? Okay, well when I was little I was diagnosed with um, dyslexia and mm -hmm. um, ADD, um, so it was very hard for me to focus in school and um, keep calm in school. So I was very uh, I was very like active. I was a very active kid. I've always sports um so when it came to you know sitting in the classroom it was very hard for me to focus mm -hmm. and then when it came with the dyslex uh, dyslexia it was very hard for me to understand certain words and um, certain numbers when it came to math so i would mix up um you know numbers when i was a little kid and mix up certain letters when i was mm -hmm. reading so it was very difficult for me to um read and to and learn spelling so my parents thought it was a good idea to put me in a smaller environment school uh, to get the attention I needed. So they put me in the school called the Winston School, which is located in Short Hills, New Jersey. And the school is specifically for learning disabled students. And this really helped me to learn in a, in a smaller environment. And it was really one-on-one. -on -one um, you know, teaching with me, with me and the, with me and the teacher, so I was really able to get the help and need that I needed with you know my spelling and my writing and my focus. Wow. Um, so after that's, that's, that, now, I was, can I ask you something, hon? So how old yeah. were you when you when this was going on? This started. This, um, I started. I joined the Winston School. Um, when I was in third grade, so I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, you did it since you were in elementary school, so we'll just, you know, yeah. we don't have to get into detail because we don't want to waste yeah, your whole interview no. on just talking about that. But, um, you know, so you started your progress in there, and, and what happened, and what kind of things did you go through there while you were there? Uh, I mean, I went through a lot. I mean, it was just, it, I was, it was a different school, different environment. It, it was very hard for me. I. You know, this was new to me. I was a little kid, so I thought it was all fun and games. My parents took it so seriously. So you know, I, there was special medication, special treatment. So it was very new. So it was very different for me. So I went through a few things. I went through. I, you know, I went through like therapy um, on the weekends just to get out to speak to somebody about how my week's going, on how I'm doing in school, how my family is, just to, you know, express everything out. 
and uh, not to hold it back inside. Um, on top of that, um, my teacher is very, really focused on me, and it was like a, it was a very small environment. So yeah. I, there weren't as many students. There's only about 100 students in the whole school, and the school's from third grade to eighth grade. So you only have about eight kids in a class. Um, so, or eight kids in a grade. So, um, you know, I was very, I wouldn't say I was very popular during that time, but I was, I was very outgoing and I really wanted to make as many friends as possible. So having eight kids in my grade was very kind of sad and different for me from going from my old private school that had a few hundred kids to a hundred kids in my whole school. So personality wise it was very different a lot because it was something new, a new environment like I said. Yeah, did before. you make did you make friends quickly and all that stuff? Yes, I did make friends quickly, but it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't the same like I wanted to be. I wanted to be, you know, having a big group of friends going, you know, out playing, get food, yeah. um, having so sleepovers how... and then it switches to, you know, having one or two best friends. So but, how, how did you move forward through all of this to, you know, um, being positive and, and keeping yourself um, moving forward with what you wanted to do in your life? Because you know that you had some goals that you already started at a young age. Yeah. Can you tell the folks out there, like, what age that started where you thought maybe you wanted to get in the PR business and, and being involved with um, what you do? I mean, did you just think about it? I know you have a friend that is a uh, part owner with your company with you that um, he yeah. has the same issues as you do as far as um, with the uh, disability that you guys have and um, also he's been through some of the same things so you both are kind of on the same wavelength, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we are family friends. We went to middle school, went to elementary, middle school, and high school together and, you know, he's, he's my best friend. He's one of my best friends today. What's his and name? One of my his name is Kean Connor. He lives in Glen Ridge, and you know we we're just we're just great together. He's honestly my other half, um, right. and you know I wouldn't be here without him, to be honest with you. But there is one of my other good friends. His name is Parker Regan, who we actually named the company after. He actually recently passed away last two years ago um, of a uh, snowmobile accident. Out you know, in you told Utah. me before this interview, I, it's horrible. And I think, you know, um, for the people out there to know, you know, the listeners, um, to try to move forward with someone close to you that dies, to, you know, to do something like you guys have done where you're naming the company after him, I think is, a, is just a really, uh, it, it's a great way of... Um, you know, getting through that and to remember him for all the great things that he brought to you in your lives, you know? So I think yeah. that's a really great thing of how you're giving back to all the people that have given to you and especially this person who is very close to both of you. Yeah, exactly. No, so no now one. you're you're still in school right now, right? Yes, I'm a, I'm a sophomore at Quinnipiac University. I'm a uh, public relations major minoring in management um so like everything entertainment wise celebrity wise um music wise i just i fell in love with it when i was in high school really and yeah how did I'm that always, how did that come about like were, were you happen to be like at an event or how was that i i honestly like <laughs> always had a passion for music i've always was very interested in it you know my favorite artist you know, Chris Brown, Jay Sean, Justin Bieber, Justin Timberlake. And I just always found them just so fascinating in their lifestyle. And yeah, their, I, I'll tell you, I met... music I, they make. I'll tell you, Drew, I met Justin Timberlake at the uh, Mandalay Bay. I was uh, there on vacation a couple years ago, and he was... Um, Doing a benefit for uh, the Burn Center for Sh the Shriners Burn Center for Children, you know the Shriners, mm -hmm. and they yeah. did a big golf event in the day, and then at night they had seven recording artists he put together with Timberland, Timberlake. They had an after party that night at the um, beach, which is off the charts. It was yeah. my birthday that night. It was crazy. I was in uh, like first row loge. I seen Taylor Swift, Snoop Dogg, Alicia Keys. Um, he played with Timbaland. He collaborated with every musician playing guitar, singing, whatever. He is very talented. And that was after, yeah. being, you know, playing golf and drinking all day. You know, he is a very humble guy. He really is. He's a sweetheart. Love him. Yeah. No, but I mean, I just find, you know, their lifestyle and their music just so fascinating. And I've always, I've always 
have, you know, reached out to music um, when I was a little kid, and I always just loved it. But when, it, when I really figured out that I wanted to do something in public relations and mm-hmm. something with celebrities and entertainment was my uh, senior year in high school, uh, I had to have an internship to graduate. So yeah. I went down to Miami, Florida, and I interned with my uncle, who is actually the uh, CEO of New <laughs> Science, which is a uh, nutrition company. And they have a lot of great, you know, business clients. And some of their clients, are t- their biggest clients are Tiger Woods, David Ortiz, Arian Foster. So I randomly got put into their marketing and PR field. So I was able to really kind of learn and grow and I was able to travel with their team. I went out to Malibu to see their research facility, you know, and I went wow, to... Wow, that's pretty impressive yeah, now. It, How it old was, were you when you did that? You were in your first year of high school, you said? No, I was a senior in high school, so I was, yeah, I, just, I was like 18. Okay. Um, um, so it was very, it was very eye-opening and it was very different and I was able to um, see a lot of, I was very exposed. So I loved it and I was like, this is very cool because so I was able to meet David Ortiz and get Ron, meet Rondé Barber and get autographs and photo shoots and I was like, wow, I really can see myself doing this in the near future. So, so, let, me, so um, let me, excuse me, so let me ask you, so, mm-hmm. you know, so the audience out there, you know I'm writing a book and if you want to be a part of that, um, one of my questions is, is um, so for for people that want to be involved, like what you do, and from your own personal experience, you know, do you think you need to focus, like, w- like you have to see yourself doing that in order to move forward to being that, or like, what do you think um, people need to do? What advice do you give that, you know, what I'm saying for um, to be successful, to drive yourself. Like you're you're saying right now that you foreseen yourself doing this. Uh, yeah. So that's I mean, I you. think it's just I think it's just something that you love to do. I mean, if you if you love sports, you know, try to do something in the sports field. I mean, it could be anything from you know sports like training to um, sports broadcasting. It could be anything. If you love so, sports, yeah. So what sports. you're saying is, and it's funny because the guy that I just interviewed the other night, Frankie Ambergamo, he's an actor for the Boston SAG, and he said, you know, in everything in the industry is very hard work, and you know, yeah. these kids that think that they can just go out there and just be a part of SAG, like you have to pay your dues and you got to work hard. You got to, you know, PR yourself and your PR company, so you understand where it's coming from. Yeah. Um, and, and I want the folks to know out there, not that we're going to jump stories here, but, you know, the name of uh, Drew's company is called McVeigh, you know, after his friend, and it's one word. And uh, do you want to tell them how that's spelt? And so when, I know your website's under construction, but it'll be up. How can uh, they look you up? What's it going to be under? Um, it'll be under McVeigh PR. You know, you can look it up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, but when the website, but when the website comes up, it's going to be m a c v e i g h p r dot com, and not p period r period. It's just p r, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So I just want the folks out there to know that you know when you're looking for that in the future. I mean, it is under construction, but within a month it'll be all set up because this yep. interview will be posted on YouTube for now, and it'll be exposed to you know worldwide for the whole world to see for the future for you and for me for the show and for my book, so um, I want to make sure we get the information correct for everyone, and so people out there, it's mech, M-A-C-V-E-I-G-H-P-R.com. Excellent. Yeah. So now can you tell us some other things that you've done, because so that got your mind associated with this, so you're with the family member who's giving you behind the scenes, you know, uh, situations where you're around these people. Can you tell us like what that felt like, and, and then what else did you do? I mean, I, I just did everything. I mean, that was just, that was my first time really being in the field. So um, I was kind of really overwhelmed and kind of um, pulled back a little bit a little on, on some of the stuff. But when everything really sunk in was when I was able to get my first internship with uh, Bad Boy Entertainment. Um, I had that internship the summer of 2013, and I was able to work with the, you know, executive assistant to uh, P. Dizzy. And that's where I really was just blown away, uh, you know, how much 
It's like how much you need to put into working in the entertainment field. So can you, um, can you tell us, I mean, we don't want to give away his, all his secrets for that, but for what you can tell us legally, um, can you tell the folks out there, because it might help them, you know, and it'll be a part of the book, some advice that, you know, from what you gathered, from what you've seen of the hard work, it's not just like it's slapped in your hand. What did you see that you gained from that, that you can tell people that'll help them? What do I see? I, I mean, some just advice, and um, from what I've seen when I was there, I mean, honestly, the little little things count in life. The little things that you do, you know, don't go unnoticed. So, um, a lot of the stuff that I did there was, I did little stuff. I mean, I, I, Planned, I planned some of that. I mean, this is this is kind of big, but I planned some of his trips when he went out to Paris and when he went, you know, travel with his family. So I do call up travel agents, figure out scheduling. I did some of his um, expenses for the company. On top of that, no, I know that. And what I was asking, I'm sorry, you might have misunderstood. Now, what you gathered from him, mm -hmm. you know, being in that environment, what. Do you think, like, because you said it's hard work and you got to see really how much it entails of what he does for P. Diddy and all these other people, it's not very easy. I mean, he had you do an interning for him, but you know what his job wasn't very easy either. And to, to take, you know, to, to have what it takes to do this, what can, you, what can you tell people that it is from what you gathered from that internship that'll help them? Because... I know what you were doing, but I'm saying from seeing what he does for P. Diddy and other people, what did you gather? What I gather, I mean, he has to just really be open-minded, um, and he has to be positive. Everything that you do is not going to be, like, it's not always going to be straightforward, it's not always going to be perfect, but you just have to do your best. Yeah, and you got to um, be able to take constructive criticism. Exactly. So, you know, if if they're telling you to do something a certain way, don't take offense to it. You know, there's multiple ways of doing something. And, you know, you learn from your mistakes. So, um, I mean, a lot of stuff, like I said before, is what I really did. And I was just able to really grasp all the information and, and really learn from, um, you know, the best of the best. No, I, 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 I hear you on that, and that's really good advice. So folks out there, what Drew is saying, and this will be, you know, put in the book as well, is that um, you, be, you need to be able to be a little humble and, and take the constructive criticism. If you really, this is something you want to do, whatever it is, not just PR, but anything. You have to be open-minded. You need to know that you're not always right when you're learning to get to this point. And you need to know that you need to take the constructive criticism and learn from it, not get a hardship from it. And that's yeah. the difference where some people just get so stuck on themselves thinking they know all that and they're, they're all this. It just, you can't be that way. You have to be, and, and I'm glad that you had that to say because that is a wonderful thing. Thank you. So anyways, um, now you did this with the, he yeah, has an intern for, you know, the guy who takes care of P. Diddy. Now, what else did you do after that? That was last summer? Now, when did yeah. you want to start the PR company with your friend, and how did that come about? Um, yeah, I was I started my PR company uh, the fall of 2013, and the reason why we started this was I wanted to show other PR companies and other people out there that I just wanted to kind of, in my free time, I wanted to be, all right, I want to do something active. I want to do something to progress my future. So I was like, I might as well start managing and, you know, maybe do my, start my own PR company because I'm a PR major and I just love the industry. So I talked to a, a few of my friends uh, that I went to middle school and high school with and I blew by them and I made a speech and presentation to them and they loved it and they were all on board. And, you know, after that, we just got, we got started, figured out everything Excuse that we me, can you, tell, can, you, can you tell us, so you wrote a speech to the high school? No, I wrote a speech to, like, my friends to give them a presentation of, you know, this is exactly what I want to do, this is exactly what I want to accomplish, and this is where I see ourselves going in the future, um, just so they can be on the same page as me, because I have a, I have a certain goal and I have a certain vision. Now, but, now, all these people have the same disability that you have because you were at the special school, right? 
Yes, that's and correct. Can you, yes. What, can you just get in a little more depth on what, I mean, because you're all in the same boat, so it really wasn't like you were treated differently there. It's when you weren't in that school and you were at another school you were treated differently, right? Yeah. And what, can you just, not to jump back, but can you just explain to people like what you went through and how to overcome that? Because I think that'll be very helpful and it'll be a good part of who you are for the book that, um, you know, you need to, you know, know how to deal with that so that, that you can move forward with what you want. So can you let us know? Yeah, I mean, when I was little, um, I... I got like teased and bullied a little bit about I, that I couldn't, you know, read a certain word, or read a certain word, or, or write certain words down because of my spelling. So I was kind of I was kind of picked on when I was little about that, and I felt different um, because I would I had to be put into a special school for it. So people and kids picked on me about it, and I feel like an, I really felt like an outcaster. Uh, yeah. because How did I you wasn't, handle that, honey? Um, I handled it, you know, my parents talked to me, uh, like I said before, I went through therapy, um, and I really handled it actually on the soccer field, where, I, you know, that was my, one of my other true passions was soccer, and I really mm. took out a lot of my kind of emotions and energy into playing soccer, so, you know, I played, I played on, you know, the state team, I played on one of the best teams in the country. What's the name of that, what's the name of that, so the people, folks out there that are listening know what you're talking about? Uh, I played for, uh, Matchfit Academy, so, um, that's just, an, that's just the academy team, but I played for, the actual team I played for, Matchfit Bulldogs, and, um, and, you know, we were able to travel, you know, all over the world, and it was great. I, I traveled to the Netherlands, I fully played European teams, uh, we played some of the best teams in the country, so, I it's was crazy. very, uh, now, can I just ask you something, uh, yeah, now, you, so you, is it basically like you had a learning disability, or what is it in a nutshell? It, it is a learning disability, yes. It is a, I did have a, I still do have a learning disability, yes. And what is that, what does that consist of, meaning that you have a hard time absorbing things, or um, writing things, a, or how, have, how does that, I just so people a, know. I have a harder time, um, I have a, it's harder for me to read, spell, you know, I have extra time taking tests, so, you know, time management is very key for me. Um, and, this, I, and this is other folks in that school as well, so it's all people with learning disabilities. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, Just so and, we know, because the folks out there that, are, that hear this, you know, people that have gone through this know that you're, well, you're I mean, everybody has problems and you're just as good as the next person and... Um, you know, there is yeah. help out there for you, and there are people that go through the same thing as you, so don't get down on yourself and know that you can yeah. still be something and be something special in life. I mean, if you really think about it, some of the smartest people uh, in the world have learning disabilities, you know. That's right. Yeah, so, I know. And, yeah. So, I agree. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's excellent. So I, I appreciate you telling us that because I know that's like your personal life, and yeah. um, I just want people to know who you are and how you dealt with that. So... Um, you just focused on, you know, well, you, first of all, your parents put you in another school so you didn't have to deal with all that BS. And then on top of it, um, how did you deal with it personally? Um, personally, it was, it was hard. You know, I, I had to talk to my parents a lot about it um, because I just felt different. I felt an outcast. I, I always asked them, you know, what's wrong with me? And am I ever going to get better? And again, it was like, yeah. a, like a disease. Um but you know, now now looking back at it, I, I I'm happy who I am and where I am today. I am happy for and you too, honey, and I think it's really great that you've overcome that. I mean, you're human, so you're going to feel those emotions because it's an outcast, especially uh, bullying. And I actually was bullied one year in my life in school, and it's a horrible feeling. And I think anyone that does any of that, for people out there that are listening, um, and there's laws now. People get arrested for that stuff now. And they, yeah. they all should be accountable for their actions. And I am 100% on your side with that. Yeah. You know. Uh, so if you ever yeah. need me to do anything for you um, in the future for if you do anything with bullying and all that stuff, you know, with, you know, in the future, um, uh, I will be a part of that because I really, uh, it's, that's in my heart and soul. So just so you know. Yeah. But um, yeah. anyways, we don't have to, like, go elaborate on that more and more. So now you sent a letter out to your friends and uh -huh. you said if whoever wants to come on board let's do something let's get this going and then this is where your friend that's your partner now got involved uh, yeah okay and is there anybody else that you went to school with that's involved too or just 
You too. Yeah, well, yeah, one of my other good friends, Joe Fignani, um, we met in high school, and he has a learning disability, too. Um, we all we all partnered up together, and we, we made this work, and, you know, he, he handles our, kind of our finance and business, like the core business part to it. I handle mainly, I handle everything pretty much, but I handle mainly the communications and PR, and um, Kian, my other co-founder, he handles the marketing side, so he really does the, the strategy and the strategic um, ideas to it. But, um, yeah, pretty much we do everything together. And how old is he? Uh, we're all 20 years old. Okay, and he's 22. And what's his name again, just so I can have this written on him? Ian Connor is, um, he is the co-founder, he's the other co-founder, and Joe Finiani, he um, is our CFO. Yeah, well, I can get that information after the interview just to make sure yeah. I spell names right, and you can tell me which pictures and stuff, so make sure we get the right situation here for you. Yeah. All right, okay. so excellent. So you guys got this together, and this was last year? Yeah. Right? So it just started, you know, within six months. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now you folks are on this journey. You're putting things together. Now, what's your goal? Our goal? Uh, um, I mean, I would say our end goal, goal is to be, you know, one of the best celebrity entertainment PR companies in the world. Um, you know, working with the best stars, celebrities, and everything all around. Um, you know, one of my idols is Jonathan Chaban, and he, I think he's just one of the best PR. He's really my PR icon. Um, and, you know, Simon, Simon Huck, and they're, they're just one of the best. So I. Yeah, Simon I is up, really good. He's really, really yeah, good. Yeah, I, I love Now, do, I you have, him. do you know people? Well, because you said you have family in there, so you have a couple connections, which you know it is how you utilize your, um, let's say, uh, people that you know. So it's, uh, you know, when you have connections, it is all in. Who you know yeah. and how you use them. So, yep. you know, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you have to just use your connection, you know, to your full ability as best as possible. I mean, a lot of a lot of where I've been and where I've gone. I mean, uh, through connections. I mean, I'm I'm blessed and I'm happy to where I've been and um, who I'm becoming um, through either you know my friends or my parents' friends and you know just every everyone that's surrounding me. But you know when when you do get to that age and when you get to college and get situated, you know connections are very key. I mean some even the smallest connections um, can lead you to the biggest opportunities and the biggest. Yeah, chances. So, so, so folks out there know that you know it is uh, you know and who you know but it's how you use them and even the smallest ones because you could be doing an event and someone there even though it's not the biggest event they might scout you and then want you for something big you never know what's going to happen exactly exactly excellent so what's your future plans now with the with everything uh, my future plans, I mean, you know, just definitely graduating school, of course, <laughs> um, on top of, uh, just working on my, working on my company, trying to be the best, um, trying, trying to be one of the youngest PR, um, you know, professionals, even though I'm not a professional yet because I don't have my degree, but trying to be one of the, um, youngest PR agents out there in the game and to, you know, change, change PR, um. It doesn't have to be so I just, I just want to change the game in general. Um, How do you so want to change that? Um, that's for me to know and for everyone to find out. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it, you're just having a different approach on things. And yeah. you're using your connections in the right way. And you have your, your a couple of friends that you went to school with that are helping you with that. So now let me well, ask you, um, so what other advice do you have to give to people um, for moving forward in life? so that um, we can sum this up and uh, put this together for you. Um, I would just say, like, be happy. I mean, just never never look down, never look back at certain things that you regret you doing because you are where you are. Um, you know, believe in whatever religious beliefs you believe in. Just believe in something. Um, you know, just just try to be the best you can be, and you know everything will work out in the end if you really put your heart and soul into it. 
Yeah, so, so the key is putting the heart and soul into it, and you can't just expect it's going to come out to you, but it's all hard work. Uh, you agree with that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you have to have something. You have to have, you know, that spark that gives you the energy um, and motivation to believe in something. Because if you, if you don't have anything to believe in, um, you know, there's, there's something to fight for. Um, no, I hear so, you, hon. I hear you. You know yeah. something, and that's, that's, that's what people um, are driven by is their goals and it's good to have goals because it makes us be hungry for that and that's what yep. pushes us to be more successful in life exactly. and I, I agree and, 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 i agree yeah. with you on that i think that's yeah and the journey and the journey is the best the journey is the best part i know well you're very young and god bless you and Thank your, you. your crew you're welcome and i think Thank it's you. a i think it's a great thing what you're doing so can you give us um can you tell the folks that are listening a few of the people that you're working with right now is that okay yeah, yeah, I'm working with Kayla Malloy, who is an up-and-coming model, uh, Daniel James, who I'm in, we're in talks with and I'm um, working with right now, um, and those are just some of the big name stars that I'm working with. That's excellent, and are they from New Jersey where you're living, or are they from Boston? Yeah, they are, they are they're all from New Jersey. All right, great. Well, you have to keep us up to date on that, so folks, that was uh, Drew Hollinger we were speaking to, and... Uh, he has a lot of the good, good, great things coming up for being 20 years old with his crew. Everyone's 20, and that's very impressive that you're working that hard and you have that drive. So look out for that in the future for McVeighPR.com. And uh, we're going to end this interview and hope to uh, talk to you in the near future when you're doing something nearby. Let me know, and uh, maybe I can get in on that yep. and uh, help out some of the people that you're associated with. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. Thank you so much. You're welcome.